We're going to begin with the forehead today. The main muscle in this area is the frontalis muscle. It's a long, thin, floppy muscle that extends across the front of the forehead. What you'll find is most of the muscle fibers occur laterally. In the medial component of the forehead, there's more connective tissue fibers. The frontalis muscle is important as it raises the eyebrows when it contracts. When it contracts, it causes horizontal lines to form, which are your typical wrinkles that we find on the forehead. When examining the forehead, the best method is to get the patient to raise their eyebrows as high as they can and wrinkle their forehead as much as possible. This way we can see how far the horizontal lines extend uh, across the front of the forehead. You can test the strength of the forehead by placing your fingers on the frontalis muscle whilst the patient is contracting to really feel the strength underneath and see which areas may require higher doses of neurotoxin. It's important to identify how far laterally these lines extend as this will create the borders of our treatment zone. The technique for treating the frontalis muscle is as follows. Once the patient has raised their eyebrows and we see how far laterally the lines extend, we'll draw two vertical lines in this area. We'll then mark out the orbital rim and then place a line horizontally across the forehead two centimetres above this area. This gives us our defined treatment area. There are two main complications that I worry about when treating the frontalis muscle. The first is brow ptosis. So this is where we have too high of a dose or we've treated too far laterally on the frontalis muscle and it causes the ends of the eyebrows to sink down, giving a very heavy appearance to the patient. The second complication is called spocking. This is where not enough product has been placed in the lateral frontalis and it causes the eyebrows to extend upward as if the patient is always surprised. Okay, let's start with our treatment of the forehead. First thing to do, let's give it a good clean. Keep the patient's hair back, just nice and gentle. Clean the whole forehead and extending down into the temples and into the brow as well. Okay, nice and clean. The next part is we're gonna get the patient to do some actions for us to see just how active that muscle is. Amy, could you raise your eyebrows as high as you can for me? So you can see as the frontalis contracts, the lines appear. We can see just how far laterally they extend. So we're just gonna make a little note as to how far they're going. Raise again for me. Very good. So I've just marked out the lateral component of the frontalis muscle. Can you do an angry face for me? You can see it lines closely to where the glabella complex, the ends of the muscles are here. So we've drawn our lateral borders. Get the patient to raise their eyebrows again for me. You can see the very top layer of where the last line is. That's important to know. We want to see exactly how far it extends upwards and then relaxing for me. If we feel around the orbital rim here, about one and a half, two centimeters up from that, you can just use your fingernail as an example, is going to be the safe zone. So I'm going to mark out two centimetres on each side, and I'm just going to draw a nice line connecting the two. So now when Emmy raises her eyebrows, all the treatable area is within the rectangle and relaxing. I like to place one injection point on each side right on that line, and we're going to do a crisscross pattern here. So I'm going to go up and down, up and down from both sides. So we've done this one, up and down, up and down. When Amy raises her eyebrows again, you can see we've nicely blanketed the entire frontalis muscle with the injection sites. The reason that we place one injection on the very lateral borders of the frontalis is so that we don't get the spocking effect which would result in the eyebrows going up like this. If you treat too low towards that two centimetre line or you put too high a dose in this area, this may result in the brow falling downwards. It's always okay to be conservative. Do a standard dose here. If the patient needs more in the two-week review, 
you can top it up. You can't take out what you put in, but you can limit the dose at the start, okay? Cool, so let's move on to the treatment now. So, when injecting the frontalis, we'll start with the lateral point and we'll move our way across the forehead. Use your non-dominant hand to tether the skin nice and tight. So when you introduce the needle, it goes through the skin nice and easily. Don't be slow, be nice and punchy, okay? First injection, one, two, three, in. We're at a medium depth here, and we're going to do our first injection. Finished. We're gonna move on to the next section in a second. So we can use a little bit of a vibration technique for these areas. Put the vibration stick close to the point where your needle's gonna go, and inject, okay? Moving our way around, injecting. Injecting. You certainly don't need to, to use this, but it does take the edge off for the patient, okay? We're gonna come around to the other side now. Applying a little bit of vibration. Mid-depth, injecting. Vibration, mid-depth, injecting. The angle that we're injecting on is about 45 degrees. If you do it too superficially, you're just going to get the skin and you're not going to get the full effect. You can inject quite deep, but we don't want to be on the bone. We want to be right in the muscle belly the best that we can. Again, vibration, insert, injecting. Vibration, insert, injecting. Like I said, if you're not using a vibration tool, you can certainly just tap the area or just pull and give it some tension. Tension, insert, inject, withdraw, okay? That's the frontalis. So we've completed the frontalis muscle. Let's move on to the next section.